underwater emergency. Two words every diver dreads to hear. My name's Mike Nelson. I'm a professional diver. I'm also a commodore in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, meaning that I'm subject to call for emergency duty. That's why I was pouring on the coal now. Ten minutes earlier, the Coast Guard reached me at a salvage job I was working, just south of San Diego. They trapped me because I was the boat closest to this particular emergency. No sign of life. I didn't figure. I was sure that this was the position they'd given me off Rosarita Beach. So I decided to drop anchor and get ready for action before checking back with the base for further information. mean that the information I wanted was on its way up to me. Oh! It's just trapped down there. Quick, hurry! As soon as I get my gear on. Take it easy now. Get your breath, huh? This is trapped, I tell you. Yeah, I know. You're Forrester. Got your call from the uh, Coast Guard. It was relayed to me. I'm in the auxiliary. How long has she been down there? I don't know. But about a half an hour. We found this old freighter and Anna went in. How deep is she? About 90 feet. It's almost right under us. All right, show me where she is. I could figure, Forrester and the girl had been exploring the compartments inside the cargo hold. The hull must have shifted. The steel wall of the compartment had mashed down on her leg. I didn't have to be a doctor to see that she was in great pain. The steel plate was pinching her leg cruelly and cutting off the circulation below the pressure point. All the same, she was fighting hard and well to control her fears. I did what I could, but even with Forrester's help, I couldn't even budge the plate. She had been trapped a long time now, and the strain affected her judgment. She didn't understand when I asked her about her air supply. I got through to her finally, though. She told me that she only had a few minutes left. I gave her a fresh tank and all the encouragement that I could.
I sure hated to leave her down there alone, trapped, helpless. But I needed some specific information from Bob Forrester. Medical information. Unless I got the right kind of help to her soon, the girl would be more than frightened and hurt. She'd be dead. Trapped in 90 feet of water, there was no time for recriminations or regrets. What I needed to know from Forrester, I'd have to pick up on the run. I got on the horn right away. Coast Guard Radio. This is WM2050. Over. Coast Guard Radio. This is WM2050. Over. WM2050. This is Coast Guard Radio. Over. This is Mike Nelson. Reporting on that emergency off Rosarita Beach. A girl scuba diver trapped in the sunken freighter. Trapped? Yeah. The hull must have shifted. A buckle plate snapped shut on her leg. What assistance do you need? A doctor, fast, by plane. A surgeon that knows how to use a tank. Uh, just a minute. What's her blood type? Do you know by any chance? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we gave blood together. It's, um... Uh, Hurry up. Type O, RH negative. Blood type O, RH negative. Repeat, type O, RH negative. Now, time's very important. Get that doctor here as fast as you can, huh? He may have to amputate. Roger, roger. Nelson, you said amputate. You didn't mean that. Swelling in that leg is bound to increase. Those plates aren't going to give. Well, listen, you can't amputate. Is she your wife? She's the first thing in the world to me. She has been since we met four years ago on Broadway. Broadway? In a musical. I was a choreographer, the dance director. And she's a dancer? Yes. A great dancer. Anna Buonanova. Anna Buonanova? You've seen her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, last time was uh, about a year ago in the Hollywood Bowl. Boy, she is great. She's the greatest. So you see, you can't just snap your fingers and say, well, then we'll cut off her leg. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't change things. The leg is still pinned down by quarter-inch steel. Listen, if she has to lose her leg, that's better than losing her life, isn't it? But her legs are her life. on me, but it was a lot rougher on Anna Buonanova. I sent Bob Forrester down to the wreck to keep her company. He'd be able to tell her at least that some kind of help was on the way. time it took the help to arrive, and it got here even sooner than I'd expected. I thought of a million different ways to free her. The only trouble was, none of them would work. Coast Guard sent a good man, Commander Frank Martin of the United States Public Health Service. He was an ex-frogman and an expert surgeon. He also knew how to move fast.
I could see that she was weakening and the pain was getting worse. Commander Martin told me later that her pulse was surprisingly steady, considering what she'd been through this past hour. I didn't have much hope for it, but maybe now that there were three of us down here, we might be able to lift the plate. Commander Martin okayed making the try. All it did was increase her pain to the breaking point. She blacked out, fainted. Underwater, that's dangerous. Fatal sometimes. The only way a scuba diver gets air is by inhaling through his mouthpiece. Anna lost hers. The instant Commander Martin spotted this, he worked the mouthpiece back into her mouth and held it in place. I think that for a moment, all three of us prayed that she'd start inhaling again. She did. We hadn't lost her, yet. But how were we going to save her? I didn't have any ideas. I could only hope that Commander Martin did. We left Forrester behind with Anna and started topside for a conference. Well, what do you say, Doc? Oh, it looks bad. Virtual stoppage of blood below the knee. Tissues are starving. Huh? What are we going to do about it? What have you tried so far? Nothing that's worked. I don't understand. Torch would cut her free, wouldn't it? Yeah. But that freighter was built during wartime. Those plates are stripped with special alloys that spread heat. Oh, I see. By the time we got her free, her leg would be cooked. There must be some way. And if there is... I wish you'd tell me. There's no other way, huh? Pain and exposure underwater too long? I'll have to take off the leg. Prima ballerina, 90 feet underwater. Her leg pinned in a steel vise. And to save her life, she was going to have to lose her leg. Why are you going to all that trouble? You don't have to sterilize anything, just go down and hack it off. Now take it easy, Mike. I do have to do this. These instruments have to be sterile before I go down, no matter what bacteria they may pick up in the water. Never forget the way she danced. Beautiful technique. You were never aware of it. Everything she did was so... so simple and so warm. Never be another dancer like her. And we can't do a single thing to save her leg. No, but we might save her life. Thought of something that might work. What's that? I don't know why I didn't think of it before. An air saw. That'd be able to cut through those plates. Do you have an air saw? No, but the base can fly us out one in about 20 minutes. No, there just isn't time. She's already been down there almost two hours. If she goes into shock... But this way, it'd give her a good chance to save her leg. And lose her life. No, Mike. It's the leg of her life now. And you know what choice a doctor has to make. I know what choice I'm going to make. Mike, if I thought there was one chance in 10,000, I'd go along with you. But there isn't. Face it. 
Every minute that goes by increases the danger of shock, and the pain's getting worse. How long do you think she can stand it? And what happens when she becomes unconscious? What happens then, Mike? What happens when you cut through her leg with that knife? She'll faint. I'll have to hurry, that's all. I'll load the area with a topical anesthetic. Whatever you give her, she's going to pass out. When that happens, what then? Shock. I'll do it as quickly as possible, then we'll have to rush her right to the surface. Without a recompression chamber? You know how long she's been down there. What do you think's going to happen when you take her straight up without staging? All right, all right. But it's dangerous to wait. I know. I'll tell them. They'll rush it. It took me only a minute to get the Coast Guard moving. They did have an air saw available. And it was on its way to me almost before I finished asking for it. Okay, Roger, out. Hey, will you uh, bring up that slate for me? It's up. Yeah, good. With Commander Martin's silent blessing, I scrawled a message for Anna Buonanova. Get you free, it said, in 30 minutes. That was the wildest promise that I'd ever made. But no matter what, I was going to keep it. She could hold out for just a little while longer. And there was a chance, a tiny chance, that the world might see her dance again. I showed her the slate with its crazy promise. Get you free in 30 minutes. How? By cutting off a leg? Topside, I waited for the air saw. Every minute seemed like 10. But to Anna Buonanova, it must have seemed more like 100. The saw arrived 20 minutes after my radio request. Commander Martin and I were on our way with it in something like 20 seconds. take an air saw to cut through this kind of steel alloy or if it would cut through it at all despite her amazing vitality Anna had been underwater so long that she was nearing unconsciousness again Commander Martin administered a stimulant Keeping her awake was going to be his job. I went to work on mine right away, trying to saw through that plate without injuring the leg that we wanted to save. Halfway through, Commander Martin signaled me to stop until he rigged a tourniquet for the leg. The sudden release of pressure on her thigh could rupture the blood vessels.
stimulant was starting to wear off. And Commander Martin had nothing else down here to give her. I had just a handful of minutes to finish the job before she lapsed into unconsciousness again. Before I made the final cut, I stopped to take my bearings. This shocked her awake again. She was sure that something new had gone wrong. I was too busy to reassure her. I let the saw do the talking for me. She was free now, but she had been in 90 feet of water for close to two hours. It had taken nearly an hour more to get her safely to the top, with stops for decompression. Bonanova. Some bruises and lacerations, but nothing permanent. Doctor, I can't tell you how. I'm so grateful. Oh, nonsense. Just doing my job. You should thank Nelson and the Coast Guard Auxiliary. How you feeling now, huh? I'm alive, thanks to you. And she'll dance again. Now, that's the important thing. That's why we waited so long for that air saw. A little too long, maybe. I guess that was a little selfish of me. Selfish? Yeah. Now I'll be able to see her dance again. I'm dancing for you right now, Mr. Nelson. I wish you could see it. I can. salt in the air that afternoon and hard in the eyes. Hi. I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today. <laughs> <laughs> 